you're telling me because if you if you're coming at me constantly say, telling me all of my imperfections, I'm gonna sit here and wonder why you with me because there's right. you have not said not one thing positive. good positive reinforcement. Mm-hmm. But I thought he was saying yeah. imperfections about himself. Yeah. yeah. Towards her, the person. So right? I'll give you. No, I'll, I'll, himself, I'll come up with though. a random yeah. example. Okay. So let's say, all right, let's like we were talking about the the friendship thing, right? right. Mm-hmm. Let's let's just say I, I was like, hey, you know this, you know, internally I, it does bother me because X Y Z. Okay. Right. And um, you know, let's say they text later at night or something. In my mind, I'm like, I ain't gonna say what I really would say. But okay. Who who is this person? Right. Mm-hmm. Takes in late at night. Now I've created a story like, oh, what's this conversation going and all that stuff. Sure. And I would try to communicate, hey, this late at night texting is, you know, it does bother me internally. Mm-hmm. Yes. It makes me think X Y Z and okay. stuff like that. Now that I'm not saying I've never said stop texting this person. At sure. Night. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. But yeah. my hope is. If you know that something is bothering me internally, mm-hmm. if you care enough, you will make some changes or we can discuss sure. changes, yeah. right? Yeah. But then it's more of like you said, they probably maybe think that I need to have a solution. So that's like mm-hmm. one one thing. It's not like, oh, I've suppressed everything and mm-hmm. now I'm dumping. Like, no, if something comes up, I'll bring it up, but not like And as, as you should, because you want to bring something up in that moment. So, you know, you won't have to rethink what took place. You both know what just happened and you're talking about it in, in that that moment yes. so you don't have to revisit it at, at another time exactly. and try to recreate other feelings that you think are emotions that you were feeling at that time which is fine and in that space the person can just validate what you say because it's valid mm-hmm. if a person was you know texting at an inappropriate time that that is that a is valid, valid concern yep and again we could talk about it tomorrow but i understand what you're saying and it will be corrected because i love you just that much and mm-hmm. i'm gonna take care of it i bet cool that's fine Hello, hello. How's everyone doing? This is Speaking with Gravity, uh, season number nine, episode 78. Great to have you guys back with us. Uh, I'm your host, Joshua Williams. To my right. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Hannah Williams. Hello, everyone. My name is Kiwana Hills. And they told me to speak into the mic, so my name is Terrence Dawkins. <laughs> and he's been obedient. That's what I'm talking about. So we far. starting off so far, so far. Uh, so we starting off good. Um, as you all can see... Um, some familiar faces, and we got, uh, I don't want to say unfamiliar face, but we have a special, very special mm-hmm. guest with us today, and we would be remiss if we did not allow her to introduce herself, Miss Kiwana. Uh, welcome to hello, me. Hello, hello. Welcome <laughs> to you. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. Once again, my name is Kiwana Hills. Mm-hmm. Um, my position, I am uh, a social worker for um, AIDS Health Foundation. And I've been asked to come on this show to um, to talk with you all. I'm a huge, huge fan of Gravity, so I I'm so excited to be here. So thank mm. you for having me. Thank you for coming. Yes, we're yeah. so appreciative to join yeah. in on this conversation. And I guess I'm gonna start it off. Please do, please because, do. Yeah. Uh, people want to know some things. You know what the people want to know. So what's up? So I have a question that I'm gonna pose to everyone. That question is: Can you be best friends? With the opposite sex. <clears throat> best emphasis on best friends besties. is what I heard. <laughs> Sound like Hannah gonna take it, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Y'all besties. Um, I believe that you can have a very close friendship with a person of the opposite sex as long as there are mutual boundaries between you all. Um, I do also believe that if one person has a romantic interest in the other person, that complicates that friendship aspect. Um, so it, it creates some gray area around a true friendship. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's my take on it. Me personally, I do have male friends that I'm very close with. But in my personal experience, I also recognize that I was raised around three brothers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm naturally... Um, I would say gravitate to male friendships as well as, you know, female friendships. I value both, mm-hmm. and, and that's my personal experience. Okay, can, can I answer a question on top of that? Go ahead. Uh, a can question we define, on top of a question. Yes, ma'am. Can we define close? Okay. Yeah, how close? Well, y'all said besties, best friends, um, to each his own. Y'all talk every day? I don't talk to any of my friends every day. <laughs> 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 I do believe that you can be best friends with um, with a male and not have any any underlying you know things as far as I want to have sex with you or I want to I want to be with you. I have two male best friends that are are literally my brothers, 
And I mm-hmm. think, like, like Sister said, you know, we need those type of relationships. Yeah. You know, I need that that advice from my brother who I know is talking to me and giving me good, you know, genuine advice. And no, I don't see him in any other light than what I see in my eyes. There's a respect that we have. I have a respect for him because I know he's married with kids, so I don't call, you know, at crazy times of the night. Like, we mm-hmm. have conversations. We don't speak daily, but when we link up, it's just like no love lost, no time lost. So you can. <laughs> So how do you all navigate those link-ups um, with respect to his marriage? Typically, I see him at homecoming. Okay. So I, when I see him, I see his wife. I okay. see his kids. I Boundaries. embrace his wife. I, mm-hmm. Curve is one of my, my dearest friends. You know, mm-hmm. I went on their first uh, uh, date. Oh, wow. <laughs> we oh, didn't boy. know him. Some historical. So, so we go out together <laughs> on this date. <laughs> and and, and we're, right, we're you know, the closest of friends. But I don't mm-hmm. talk to him daily. Right. You know? So you can you can have that relationship, but that like I said, there's a respect from mm-hmm. on both parties. That okay. I respect your relationship that you have with your wife, and you respect me with you know with my partner. So, <clears throat> Josh, you had something, right? I, I, I got something. No, I'm please go, up. please go. Please okay, go. so you came from a perspective of I have male best friends. So if you was in a relationship, could your partner have if it was mm. a relationship with a, a male, could your partner have a female best friend? My take on you it is that. Because I'm getting, I'm collecting my thoughts, and my take on that is that if they were already formally friends before I came into his life, mm-hmm. I'm completely okay with that, and I would just appreciate the open communication. Mm-hmm. You know, let me know who she is in your life. Let me know how how you all met, how long you all have known each other. Let me know the parameters around this, um, so that I can feel comfortable. If you say, "Hey, we're meeting up for lunch today." Mm-hmm. I feel comfortable, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so there, there definitely has to be some parameters around that. But I will also say that your job is to make me make sure that I'm mm-hmm. comfortable. It's not That's to you right know there. to go out yeah. your way to mm-hmm. do anything to make me second guess the relationship that you have with mm-hmm. this person. So if you leave me in a space of I can trust you and this woman, I can trust this lady, then I'm okay with it. Yeah. So, so, so question on top of that, I guess. <clears throat> uh, so if someone isn't giving you that. Uh, that uh, that guidance, right on that on that relationship that they have, then what's a I conversation guess what's, will yeah. be had? Mm-hmm. Conversation, you, oh, yeah. you, you would initiate oh, yeah. that yeah, conversation. conversation will be oh, we had. Can talk. I will tell you how I feel because I cannot hold you accountable of my feelings if you don't know. Mm-hmm. Conversation then changes. Then changes. Because mm-hmm. if you respect our relationship and you see that I have a problem, you gonna fix that. So I hear the the women's oh, perspective my, on this. Say, I'm ready. I'm just letting y'all get it out. <laughs> I, I hear the women's <laughs> perspective on this, but um, I, I want to pick you all's brain. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So here we go. I think it is Damn all ready. about the security of the people in the relationship. Mm-hmm. So if you have someone that is uh, insecure, of course, they're going to always mm-hmm. in their mind think, oh, I, maybe I can't trust this person. Or they're doing something. No matter what, if we have that open communication, if I'm mm-hmm. not secure within myself or our relationship, you can communicate all you want, but I'm still going to have that thought in my head that, hey, something's going on. Mm-hmm. And that could be from past experiences. That could be from childhood experiences, <laughs> you know, whatever it might be. But it's, I think it's a lot of plays into the security of the individual. I can definitely agree with that. Um, when you come into a relationship with insecurities already, it mm-hmm. does all, it complicates things mm-hmm. from the start, mm-hmm. which is why it's so important to process, well, to identify and process those insecurities that mm-hmm. we already have from our childhood or from previous relationships, et cetera, before we enter a new space. Um, it's, it's just like when you're going back to school, you don't want to go back to school with the same items you use from last mm-hmm. you know, school year, mm-hmm. the same dull pencil. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You would expect somebody to you know give you a new pencil so that you have a new fresh mentality and I feel like we can use that same mentality in relationships you know leave that baggage and those insecurities in the past and if you can't then you shouldn't be entering a new space yet that's easier said than done I'm telling you that now but true indeed but at the end of the day I'm not responsible for your triggers you not so you then yourself have to start working on that if that's something that you know that you need to work on that's <clears throat> personal it has nothing to do with me mm-hmm. then I would expect for you to work you know to work on that for the betterment of us because that has nothing to do with me mm-hmm. but now your triggers are you know impacting our relationship mm. and and if that process happens over the course of a relationship mm-hmm. I feel like it's so important to communicate. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. hey, yes. this is an insecurity yeah. of mine. Mm-hmm. 
how we can fix this insecurity is, for example, I'll let my partner go on a lunch, you know, outing with a female friend. But if I have some insecurities, let's communicate about that before before yeah. the date and let's communicate about it after. Yeah. I don't want to say the date, the outing. <laughs> <laughs> but let's communicate about it after so that we can grow as a couple and we can improve those insecurities. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. I agree. But, and the communication is very, very important because... Sometimes people will have feelings uh, about, you know, a certain situation. They don't communicate it. Mm. So what they do is they act out from behaviors. Sure. So, okay, yeah, it's fine. You can go out with your, your, mm -hmm. your best friend. All right, and they go out with your best friend. Now they come back. You got an attitude. <clears throat> you got a whole attitude. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? Nothing. But, again, that goes back to me saying I, you can't hold me accountable with something that I don't know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. People do it all the time, though, but you're right. But like you said, you know, having that conversation saying, you know, I'm telling you this because, I, you know, I love you and I love us. This is something that bothers me, and I, I need you know for you to help me <clears throat> along with this. And if you know a person that loves you, and they mm -hmm. see that you come to them and you tell them what the issue is, mm. they're gonna help you with that. If they you know if it's a, a love that's being had, they're gonna help you with that. They're not gonna do anything to you know continue to right. re-trigger you. Mm -hmm. Mm. Ooh, I, I now, something. Now, yeah. go ahead. Y'all go, okay. go ahead, please. It, sound, it sounded great. Please. <laughs> one, I will be completely honest. One thing I have experienced in what I thought to be male friendships and strictly male friendships is that they, I may have been naive to the fact that mm. they played their part as a male friend while the entire time they had hidden motives mm. of growing that friendship exactly. into a romantic and thing. I, and I think that's and, why Terrence is saying, mm -hmm. like, that's where some of that comes from. He knows males. Right. It doesn't always happen, but I have experienced that. And it does create that gray area. Mm -hmm. um, it, it does create a gray area. So I, I just want to acknowledge that. I think, and to go off, exactly go off that, if you have... Let's say uh, whether it's a female or male, they cross a boundary. Mm -hmm. You then, I think it's very important to communicate with your partner that this boundary was crossed. Mm -hmm. This is how I addressed it, and <clears throat> this is how we're going to move forward. Or y'all have a discussion on how to move forward. Sure. Are you talking about if they cross the boundary the before we met? A, if the before? friend, either way, before, after, if if they went on, a, let's say, well, I'm mainly referring to if they went on an outing because I'm not going to okay. use date. Mm -hmm. okay. They went on an outing, <laughs> and. The friend crossed the boundary. Okay. Mm -hmm. what's, I, a, what's an example of crossing a boundary? Mm -hmm. Oh, we can go. Uh, it could be a lot of things. You know, Just give me one. Put your, hand, put your hand, rub on the back. Yeah, rub on the back. Yeah. That's a boundary. Okay. 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 Boy, what are we going to talk about? This? A physical boundary. Yeah, a physical <laughs> boundary. Or well, even an uh, emotional. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about. That's a physical boundary. Well, emotional make boundary. You lose your thoughts, though. No, this is, it plays in my okay. 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 Emotional boundary. So if we having problems, mm -hmm. I would hope. That you do not go to this opposite sex best Ooh, friend to talk mm. about your mm. problems yeah. with on, me. Man. Because if they have hidden motives, now they get in the cheat code on how yeah, to be how there to, for you. Like like, well, come yeah. on, the blueprint, right? <laughs> blueprint, right? <laughs> yeah, the blueprint of oh uh he or she is vulnerable mm -hmm. in this area. If I give them this, that makes me more attractive than the mm -hmm. other right, person. More preferable. And so mm -hmm. now this is my end. Yeah, yeah. So you got to think about that. You like even physical and emotional as well. Boundaries that are being crossed uh, by you and the other person. Uh, I think that should be communicated. And then you give somebody told me this, and I'm, I'm going to always remember it. You give the other person the choice on mm -hmm. what they want to do from there. Right. You can't withhold information just right. because you're afraid they'll leave. They're going to get upset. They're going to get mad. What they the very, response is going to be exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you have to communicate it so they have the actual choice mm -hmm. of how to proceed. Mm -hmm. What I've seen from this and it sounds like this can be complicated oh there it very. sounds and from my experience it is complicated and I think as women we're okay with that complexity because we value like Kia was saying we value um, what we gain from our male counterparts mm -hmm. however what I've seen from males is that these complicated situations they just want to make it simple. So they're going to say, nah, you can't be friends with the opposite sex mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. versus diving in and saying, how do we be friends with the opposite sex? Mm -hmm. So that's what I've noticed. Yeah. That's that, that's kind of where you need someone uh, who's like kind of, I would say emotionally intelligent. Somebody, mm -hmm. who, somebody mm -hmm. who, you know, thinks about things, consider things and, mm -hmm. and is willing to consider your feelings. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe they need to be that conversation that opens up another conversation. Um, I would think about just how, um, it's how open you know how open they're willing to be emotional mm, emotionally yeah. with you because you don't want 
you, you don't want that coming up in other conversations as well. I right. would say yeah. that 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 block that shutdown. Well, no, just not at all. Mm-hmm. You want to be able to talk through things. If you can't, then that's gonna show up in other areas. Nine times out of ten, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was watching a TikTok. Yeah, I love TikTok. Me too. So I was watching a TikTok, and it said males will go to other males to talk about maybe the needs, wants of females, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't, majority of the time, we don't go to other females to try to try to understand the uh, women. Female perspective. Female female perspective. perspective. So we talking to our homeboys, trying to think our homeboys are going to tell us the truth. No, they probably, no. most of the time not. They're going to be biased as, as mm-hmm. from their sp- mm-hmm. perspective. Yeah. But if you get a woman's perspective, she can tell you if you're tripping or not and how to right. yeah, yeah. maybe how the woman's feeling and maybe, you know, you try mm-hmm. this. So I think that's very important, too, to have maybe have a female friend. Like if I'm a, I'm a male, for me, I uh, have a female friend that I can not confide in with problems, mm-hmm. but to try to help understand mm-hmm. my partner a little bit better mm-hmm. so we can help grow in our relationship. Mm-hmm. And what I'm hearing is that it comes down to different perspectives. You mm-hmm. know, if you're so limited in just gaining, for example, if I'm so limited in only gaining the perspective of my female friends about my male partner, that's very limited. Mm-hmm. It's not until I broaden and open up my perspective and say, okay, let me get a male's opinion yeah. about this situation yeah. while still mm-hmm. respecting my partner as yeah. a man um, and not throwing him under the throwing him under the the bus. So to me, it's it's about scoping out those different perspectives and weighing, you know, the knowledge that I receive from them. But boundaries and communication are important when um, dealing with opposite sex. Mm-hmm. If you're in a relationship or, or whatever um, type of situation, ship, if you want to call it. But boundaries and communication is very, very important. So, I agree. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, myself, I probably... Uh, so, so I'm engaged right now. Myself, I probably wouldn't even uh, go if it's somebody who I who I met. If it's not business, I probably wouldn't even do. You know, my my fiance got to come. You know, because okay. you wouldn't even put yourself in a position. Wouldn't want to put myself yeah. in a position. That's growth too. Yeah, That's it is. That's respect yeah, for your yeah, relationship. Yeah. And it's at the end of the day, what am I gaining from that? You know, because mm-hmm. yeah. you put yourself. Sometimes we put ourselves. Not not consciously. We put ourselves right. in situations where we don't think anything about it, but you don't know that person. You don't know mm-hmm. what their intentions are. The only person that you have total control over is yourself. So why put yourself in a situation where it's going to be questioned? Mm-hmm. And you don't even want that type of, type of unnecessary drama. Yeah. So are you all saying that in order to continue to grow a friendship, that it has to happen with a previous best friend? If I'm in a if I'm in a relationship and I have a previous male best friend, it is okay to continue that friendship over the course of my new relationship. Or if I'm in a relationship, is it okay to formulate and start and establish a, a new friendship with the male? Uh, Ooh, p- please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> please go ahead. Uh, Regardless, well, I was, if it's new or old. I want to be involved. I, I was gonna they say gonna, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring my fiance along. If 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 it's an old friend, then I probably already said something about her. Mm-hmm. And now my fiance definitely need to meet her, and um and we'll talk from there. Um next time I get ready to go out with her, I say hey man, I'm going out here, mm-hmm. and it may be the first few times actually that okay. that, that she comes yes. along. You know those, those times that I go out with my friend. Yeah, to to, yeah. to really get comfortable and see what the nature of those conversations are like. So, and, so oh, what about ahead. a new best friend, though? A new best friend. I, I don't. I don't really see myself really making a new best friend in a woman. Mm. I, I don't because my I'm best just, friend I'm, now is you know the, the word is, is friend. My we use it so loosely. Right, right. You can't be friends with somebody you just met two days ago. So it takes time to build. That's very so true. So we don't have no new friends. It's emotional. When we forty, mm-hmm. you know, forty plus years old. There's no new friends. There's right. acquaintances. Right. Correct. But no best friends. Mm-hmm. My best friend. We've been riding for I don't even know how long. Twenty plus years. Right. Like. Mm-hmm. I now only have two like you solid know, solid best friends. Yeah. I have you know my sisters, but I have two solid best friends that I call my best friend. Like you know, this is who that is. But as far as new people coming along, and this is my friend you just met two days ago. Mm. Mm-hmm. No, we use that word too loosely. Yeah, I do mm-hmm. agree. We do. Uh, so so myself, nah, I. Um, so we come, you come as a package, yeah. We both come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we back package. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. I was gonna agree. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna yeah. just, I'm gonna help you out. So, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> So, so yeah, so a lot, a lot really goes into that talk, um, I think. And you know, I think one of y'all brought up a really good point earlier. Um, people aren't always gonna come out and tell you 
hey, I'm uncomfortable with that. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes be kind of can be kind of passive aggressive, and even if y'all have the talk, uh, I think Hannah, you mentioned, and you come back and they feel in some type of way, it's gonna have to. That's gonna have to be like a continuous talk, kind of. Mm-hmm. Sure. And we have to be able to give. This is a mental health podcast, so we have to be able to realize that everybody's not where they maybe right. sure. would like to be. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we got to take care and grace, I think, with people. Or even where you are. Right, right, right. Even where mm-hmm. you are. And so um, having care and having grace for, for that other person is going to be really important if you're trying to continue a relationship with them. At some point, they got to make a change, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, just th- thinking about can I give this person some grace? I think it's really important. Oh, yeah. If, if you want to if you want to make it last. Just to also say, too, when, when we're talking about, um, you know, other people, women know women, you know, mm-hmm. like just like men know men. Like mm-hmm. if me, and, you know, me and my guy, we're out and a woman is, you know, just making these in the windows. We know, oh, she's trying to get with you. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you that. And you'd be like, nah, nah, babe, that's not what it is. Right. I, we know women. Mm-hmm. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Oh, you, yeah. know, don't, you know, don't minimize mm-hmm. the fact that we, we know, you mm-hmm. know, we know each other very well. And we can kind of see those intentions coming on. So right. don't be, you know, kind of like brushing that off when, mm-hmm. I, when I just told you mm-hmm. what it was. And then you'd be surprised that this is what happened at the end. And I'm looking at you because I told you. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, what can happen is that these friendships become such a large part of your relationship yes. that it becomes a distraction mm-hmm. that you you all are no longer focusing on the you know you and your partner mm-hmm. but it's so many distractions from the mm-hmm. outside that now y'all are dealing with external issues right, right. versus focusing on internal you know right. issues and internal growth or even individual issues and internal growth mm-hmm. um so that can present a challenge too which yes. is why i understand why a lot of men have the mentality of nah you can't have male male friends because it creates complexity mm-hmm. it, I, I then go back to the the security part of it, cause I'm, I ain't gonna lie. At one point in time, I was like that, like nah, I don't, ain't, no, ain't, no, ain't none of these male cut friends. It off. Like, cut that, cut that, cut that short. But why? But because in my mind, it wasn't necessarily her. It was, oh, I know what he's trying to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe he wasn't, but in my, I've convinced myself that that's exactly what he's trying uh-huh. to do. So it, it was something, and it, I can look at it now and say it was really me that was the problem, not anything that they mm-hmm. have done. But let there have been a boundary crossed, then now I'm like, oh, see, I told you. I told you, right? That. So I invalidated everything I was saying. Uh-huh. Now the, it uh, increased the my hyper-awareness about different things. Mm-hmm. And now it's really like, look, you need you could cut him off. But like you said, it starts to cause problems. Mm-hmm. The external stuff starts to cause problems internally. Now we're arguing uh, about this instead of trying to get closer together, mm-hmm. instead of me really effectively communicating what the true problem right, is. Right. And I think that's very important. That's why I said communication and boundaries. Mm-hmm. Communicate not just what's going on with the friend, but what's going on with you internally mm-hmm. and how it, that internal is showing up externally yeah. for other yeah. people. And not just that communication, but effective communication. Yeah, effective communication. Yeah. You know, right, talk to right. me. Let us talk it out, but don't talk. Mm-hmm. You know, talk to me. Like talk. Like we have this conversation. We have this dialogue, and we have an understanding. And we both walk away, and we both are okay with mm-hmm. what was just presented. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We got to practice that effective communication too. Yeah, that, that, that's got to be put into practice because mm-hmm. it's so easy to raise my voice a little right. bit. Oh know? yeah, it's so re- easy for me to mm-hmm. mistake something that she says because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you're not that's listening. You're yeah. listening to respond. You're not necessarily mm. listening to hear what I have to say. To you're already ready. Yeah. You already know what I'm going to say. <laughs> you're already playing with what I'm so you're ready to attack instead of just listening to what, mm-hmm. you know, what the conversation is really about. And like you said, go ahead and already formulating something within your mind. Oh, yeah. I can create, and, I can create a story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a friend of mine Google. told me earlier today, it was a quote. She can't remember who it came from, but it said, if you can change a problem by changing the way you think, then you created the problem yourself. Mm. And I don't made a whole bunch Say of problems. Say it one more time. If you-, if you can change a problem by changing the way you think, then you. you created the problem yourself. It was all internal. It's all internal. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's me. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I think also kind of like what I described is um, when I've created these stories, mm-hmm. I've, done, I've gotten better at it, but when I've created mm-hmm. these stories and narratives in my mind and then I end up reacting to the, that narrative, mm-hmm. I end up self-sabotaging. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've, uh, and I think that's what we're here to talk about yeah, today. Yeah, that comes from yeah, fear. Yeah, the fear. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of rejection, the fear of, you know, 
Mm-hmm. I'm walking away. So Rejection. To, yeah. Abandonment. I bet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hurt. Yes. Pain. You know, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. You mm-hmm. know, it's. It's, above, yeah. it's, a, above. it's a defense, really. Right. It's yes, a yes. defense mechanism. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, and I've learned that over the years, and I can effectively communicate that now. Yeah, that's right. um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I also run into this problem, though. And y'all, maybe y'all can help me out with this. So I'm going to turn a little okay. bit. I'm make sure <laughs> bring, I bring, back. bring my mic okay. up. Okay. But to prevent self-sabotage, we say, oh, you need to effectively communicate, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Is there too the uh, is there a thing as uh is there a thing as too much effective communication? Hmm. And I'll tell you why. Tell us why. Because when you effectively communicate, so if something's bothering me internally, I feel like I need to bring it to you so we can have a conversation. But then there have been some experiences where it's like, oh, now it's always a problem you're trying to um, start or why you trying to start an argument. Address. Yeah. Mm-hmm. address. You always got something you want to address, like Nah, I'm really trying to tell you what's going on with me internally so we can mm-hmm. work through this. And yes, it might be a lot, but it, I, can, I found that sometimes it can be overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And then it, it'd be like, oh, well, you communicate too much. I say, what? No, I can, what? Mm-hmm. Communicate too much. So is there a such, such thing as too much effective communication? I've been in that situation. And in my perspective, I don't believe that there's a such thing as e- too much effective communication. But there has to be some type of pacing that is going on. You can't just dump Everything. A lot no, no, in yeah. everything on mm-hmm. your partner, um, you know, in the same day. Like, oh, I've been thinking about all of these issues in my head. You know, um, <laughs> let's address everyone <laughs> no, no, right no, no, now. No, no. Back, yeah, back yeah. to back to back yeah. to back. And especially as women, like, we need space to just breathe and process things. And, and men, too. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you dump so much stuff on your partner, you're expecting all of these resolutions there's no room for change. You Are know? you expecting resolutions right away, though? Or, no. Uh, or well, sometimes you just want to talk it out. I'm just going to let you That's know. That this is what I got going on. Mm-hmm. Because in my mind, if I let you know, then I'm hoping that you can, you know, really just may, sometimes maybe even just comfort me, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, not necessarily I need you to do anything, but just okay. be there, right? Do you communicate that part, though? Do you communicate that part? That it's not yeah. always, okay. I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. always want yeah. a want. solution exactly. right away. But, then, the, but yeah. you do communicate what, that yeah, part, too. But this is just what's going on. But it's all. Oh, it's so it's just overwhelming. You communicate too much. I'm like, oh, okay. What but then it? when that happens, guess what happens after that? So now, all right, you sh- now you shut down or you you kind of mm-hmm. pull back a little bit, because right? Because you're afraid of what you're gonna do because that might be a problem for you as well. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So now I pull back, and then if I pull back, guess what's gonna happen? I start creating stories again, right? Yeah. And then right. I start self sabotaging. <laughs> so it's a lose yeah. lose, people. Because that I feel person like closed you, that door. On yeah. You. And and then but it, like you were saying though, the pace, like you mm-hmm. know, you're telling me because if you if you're coming at me constantly say, telling me all of my imperfections i'm gonna sit here and wonder why are you with me because there's right. you have not said not one thing positive. good positive reinforcement mm-hmm. i thought he was you're, saying imperfections about himself yeah, yeah. towards her, the person so right? i'll give no, you I'll, himself, I'll come up with though, a random yeah. example okay. so let's say all right let's like we were talking about the, the friendship thing right, right. Mm-hmm. let's let's just say i i was like hey you know this you know Internally, I, it does bother me because X, Y, Z. Okay. Right? And, um, you know, let's say they text late at night or something. In my mind, I'm like, uh, I ain't going to say what I really want to say. But okay. who, who is this person? Right. Mm-hmm. Texts in late at night. Now I've created a story like, well, what's this conversation going and all that stuff. Sure. And I would try to communicate, hey, this late at night texting is, you know, it does bother me internally. Mm-hmm. Yes. It makes me think X, Y, Z and okay. stuff like that. Now, that was, I'm not saying, I've never said, Stop texting this person. Anymore. Sure, right. Yeah, 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 right. But yeah. my hope is, if you know that something is bothering me internally, mm-hmm. if you care enough, you will make some changes, or we can discuss sure. changes, yeah. right? Yeah. But then it's more of like you said, they probably maybe think that I need to have a solution. So that's like mm-hmm. one one thing. It's not like oh, I've suppressed everything and mm-hmm. now I'm dumping. Like no, if something comes up, I'll bring it up, but not like and as, as you should because you want to bring something up in that moment. So you know you won't have to rethink what took place you both know what just happened and you're talking about it in, in that moment yes. so you don't have mm-hmm. to revisit it at, at another time exactly. and try to recreate other feelings that you think are emotions that you were feeling at that time which is fine and in that space the person can just validate what you say because it's valid mm-hmm. if a person was you know texting at an inappropriate time that that is that a is valid, valid concern yep and again we could talk about it tomorrow but i understand what you're saying and it will be corrected because i love you just that much and mm-hmm. I'm gonna take care of it. I bet. Cool. That's fine. It's simple now. It's right? simple now. Right? It's simple now. <laughs> but when those emotions, but when those emotions come, come it ain't even nothing. We just friend. 
All right, never mind. That sounds like a defe- yeah, defense it's mechanism. Defense. Yeah, it's a defense. and then you're minimizing my feelings. Exactly. So you know what? Mm-hmm. Never mind. Don't worry about it. So yeah. what I'm hearing is that you know self. A person can self-sabotage in relationships. And I just want to add the cutie of the hour, um, which is just another version of speaking with gravity are fun facts that you can share with your friends, colleagues, or even family members. Did you know that self-sabotage often stems from a fear of success rather than a fear of failure? Mm. Many people unconsciously sabotage their own efforts because they are afraid of changes that success may bring or the responsibilities that come with achieve, achieving their goals. Mm. You are absolutely mm. right. But mm. I, it ain't all about me. I'm going to let somebody else talk. Y'all go ahead. I was just going to sit over here in my little corner. We want to hear what you got to say. Good. Like, all right. So um, <laughs> I, was, I was conversing with someone. Okay. And they let me know, oh, I self-sabotage a lot. Okay, I, I heard that. You know, validated, acknowledged it. But they use that term and everything. Uh, uh, yeah, they said oh, that. Wow. Okay. They said it. So, very so, self-aware. Very, very yeah, very self-aware. Mm-hmm. But it, it was definitely, like you said, a fear of things going right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So because mm-hmm. they've never experienced things mm-hmm. going right. Mm-hmm. So when I start to experience feeling loved, cared for. Um, you know, all this uh, comfort and all that stuff mm-hmm. is very foreign to me. Mm-hmm. So that uh, means uh, something's going to be wrong or something's going to mess up. So I need to go ahead and end this. So I need to go ahead and create some type of problem or whatever it is, mm-hmm. which ultimately is a self sabotaging behavior oh, because yes. now I'm scared. Yeah. Right. So you're yeah. absolutely right with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Basically, I'm going to get you before you get I'm going to get you before you get mm-hmm. me. Because this is an unknown feeling, unknown territory. I don't know how to navigate through these words. I'm so used to chaos. And I'm so used to being unloved. I don't know how to function, you know, in love. I don't I don't know mm-hmm. what that looks like. Mm-hmm. And self-sabotaging, basically, it, it just means that you're going against your own best interest. Yep. Right. That's truly you, what, what that is. You're going against your own. Because of, you know, maybe childhood traumas that you've mm-hmm. experienced and things that you never, you know, you never dealt with. The fear, abandonment. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a multitude of things as to why we do that to ourselves. And I yep. had one person, um, we were having a conversation, and she said that, this seems too good to be true. Mm-hmm. That comfort is on. And I'm like, but why can't it be? Why mm-hmm. can't it be? Why can't we have the too good to be true? I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Why, why, why are we minimizing Cause, ourselves? Because as soon as, soon as something goes wrong, mm-hmm. she's going to say, I knew it was I knew too it. good mm-hmm. to be true. It validates that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because of that fear validate. that you're going to have. Mm-hmm. Because but you're you going to always have trouble. In you're going to always right. have it. Challenges. you mm-hmm. always going to have it. That's something right And you're going to meet it head on. And I believe that... This topic really hits home, but mm-hmm. I also believe that a lot of people self sabotage because they're so accustomed and comfortable in uh, existing within that comfort zone yes. that they're afraid to take those risks that can be the difference between um, you know achieving some of their goals versus achieving all of their goals, mm-hmm. especially those long term goals. Because mm-hmm. I know one behavior related to um, self sabotaging is procrastination. Yes, it is. Yes, it mm-hmm. is. Yes, it is. And also worrying about what the other people think about you. Mm. You know, that thought of... Self-image. You know, yes, self, mm-hmm. And if we, you know, we spend so much time thinking about, what well, if I do this, I'm going to look crazy. I'm going to look foolish. You know, I'm mm. going to fall on my face. And not understanding that that's a part of the process. Right. You know, but you then get, you know, you get back up. You dust it up and you get back up again. Yep. Mm-hmm. You don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to stay stuck in that. But sometimes we are so used to that and we're okay with that because we're able to function and... We're good. Mm. Shutting down. That's another one. That's, a, that, that's, that's a, powerful. So mm-hmm. let me not give you anything which will push you away. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's nothing that you've done. Yes. But it's the behavior I did that pushed you away. Mm-hmm. But I did the behavior because you were getting too close. Mm-hmm. Right. So, mm-hmm. and, I, and I think another one could be anger. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, I don't know how to receive this, yes. so I respond and react yes. with anger yes. and starts starting uh, uh, pointless arguments and things right. like yeah. that. So those, that's still some other behaviors that might show up as uh, self sabotaging. I had a relationship um, with a young man, and um, it was it was so good. It was it was the sweetest. He was the sweetest person ever, mm. but he said he thought I was going to be his downfall because of all the mistakes he's made previously with women, mm. and I was going to be the one. That it that yeah. that messed it up for him because he wouldn't I, allow himself to be blessed. He, would, huh? he wouldn't allow, and I left. I left him right there mm-hmm. because mm. As you if that have. if that's what you believe, you messed and up. You're going to continually do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> then there's nothing I can do with that. But at least we had that honest conversation, and mm-hmm. he told me why he was doing X, Y, and Z. Right. Because he felt like I was going to be the one that break him from all the things that he did in his past to women. Mm. And we parted ways, you know, with that. But, you know, with the respect of, you know, he let me know what it is. And I can respect that. You know, I can, mm-hmm. I can definitely respect you telling me how you feel so you give me the option of what I do with this relationship. Give and, and what choice. I Yeah, and what, I, yeah. Yeah, and what I do with this information yeah. instead of trying to lead me on and making me think that this is what it is and it's truly not because of your, your mindset and where you are and how you're going to sabotage this relationship. So, mm-hmm. And where does this sense of self-sabotaging come from mm. where, where does it originate from in my perspective it comes from maybe childhood, childhood. Wounds, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very much of being so. abandoned Very much. Mm-hmm. um and and now it has correlated or it has progressed to your adulthood to your mm-hmm. relationships maybe to the workplace you know mm-hmm. you have these grand work goals that you have in mind but you keep procrastinating because you're so afraid mm-hmm. of success yes yes because you've been told so much of what you can't do, the limitations that you have, that you actually start to believe mm-hmm. that that's who you truly are. Because if the person that, you know, and not, it's not necessarily my story, but if a person that you grew up with and they tell you this, you're nothing, you're not going to be anything, mm-hmm. you're not going to succeed, you start believing that because what this person that knows me, evidently they know more than me. So mm-hmm. this is this is my outcome instead of me, you know, necessarily believing you know, the gifts that I have that I know that I can elevate. I know I can, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, can become successful. But the person who, you know, who knows me the best is telling me this. I'm going to, I'm definitely going to believe that person versus a stranger Mm -hmm. that, you know, per se sees something in you. So I think truly from, from childhood, because you don't come out the wound, you know, doing that. It has to be cultivated. You you know, your environment creates you into the person Mm -hmm. that you are. And then sometimes we minimize and we compartmentalize our feelings, Mm. but they show up. Yeah, they're going to keep out. Mm-hmm. They're going to eventually come out, and you don't even know what that is or why, mm-hmm. or why you're even acting that way. And I'm so appreciative we have these labels such as self-sabotaging yes. now so that we know exactly you know what, what the is. issue is going is. on yes. and at hand. It has a name. And, you know, that, that sense of self, excuse me, self-sabotaging, it comes from a sense of just wanting to be safe. That's you know, if you've yeah. never That's experienced it. as a child a, a safe place to be vulnerable, mm-hmm. how do you expect to do it as an adult? Yeah. So what I'm hearing us say is that maybe one treatment to self-sabotaging is healing your inner childhood wounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So can self-sabotage also be uh, intentional? It can be. So, so I'm, Because a lot of what I'm hearing is uh, it might be, uh, well, I guess that's kind of intentional. Um so I guess can it be unintentional? Basically, uh, what I'm hearing is that a lot of self sabotage is because of, um, you know, like we were saying, old wounds and things mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. But then I think about also actions that you take for pleasure, right? So maybe not just to be safe, but for pleasure. Is mm-hmm. that could that be self sabotage too? Like, like if I'm in school, I'm skipping class or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Because I want to be out to be with my friends, or if I'm staying out late, I know the consequences. Uh, but I'm saying, oh, I can probably get up early, you know, when mm-hmm. I'm staying out late and then I'm late for my job. So I get, can that be considered self-sabotage or would y'all consider I mean, that self-sabotage? Because, again, it's going against your better interests. You know, mm-hmm. you're doing that to self. So eventually it's going to impact you in some way, shape or form. Mm-hmm. You know, you ended up, you know, getting up late, being late to you. You're going to lose your job. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's, uh, that is not any uh, interest for for you because you're not going to have an income. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it can look that way. But then you wonder why. Mm-hmm. Why, why is that so? You know, mm-hmm. I used to, um, uh, I was a case manager for food stamp and Medicaid eligibility. And I would have women who have become so dependent Come on, on government assistance that, and so, uh, I, don't, I don't even know the word I'm looking for. But mm-hmm. anyway, they are so en- enthralled into the government assistant that I had a lady who was working make an income because all all that is is a supplement you know yeah. right. it's, just, it's just a supplement she quit her job yeah. just so she can stay on food mm-hmm. stamps hmm. you know you don't want to do you don't want to do anything better because I'm so conditioned yeah. and comfortable and comfortable yeah. with this assistant I, I don't care who's in my business I don't care that I have to march to your beat and bring in mm-hmm. you know documentation or make sure I show I don't care about anything as long as I'm getting mm-hmm. this supplement each mm-hmm. month. 
Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to better myself. Yes, I'm going to. And it's generational. It was her right. mother, her grandmother, mm-hmm. and now her. I, I know, I know, I know Terry about Gener- Yep. Yeah. Cycle breaker. That's me. <laughs> so, so I have very similar experience. So when I started off right out of college, I was in workforce development. I'm still in workforce, but I was career development, mm-hmm. uh, career development coach. And, uh, yeah, used to have people, uh, people would come in, very same instance, and uh, they'd be getting food stamps. Our goal was let's get you a better job. Mm-hmm. You know, so the you job you got is cool, but let's get you a better job. Mm-hmm. Let's We'll pay for your training and yes. all this stuff we'll do for you yes. because you own food stamps, so you qualify. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. consider low income. But, yeah, uh, folks, you know, did not want to give they up. They didn't want to. They didn't, did not want to give so up the, those food stamps. Yeah. They, and if they, they benefits decreased, it was a problem. And it's like, I don't been threatened so much. I'm like, I don't have your stamps in my drawer. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really don't. I don't have them. But I, I, I don't understand how you not want to break free from me right. being all in your business and mm-hmm. making sure that you show up on time in order for you to get this. You have to do this. Mm-hmm. But you have individuals who are okay with that feeling. And the thing is, sometimes we, sometimes we don't even know that we're doing it. We right. don't even know that that's what we're doing. But, then, but when you are aware of what you're doing and mm-hmm. you're okay with it. Is it self-sabotage then? If my goal I, now, is to stay now, on. My thing is, it's not even, it's, it's self-sabotage, but you're okay with it. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no, there's, we can have a conversation about it, but if you're away, I'm aware of it, what is there to do? Because we both acknowledge it. You mm-hmm. you know it, and you're not trying to change. So until you're ready to change. I, I can see, because I can see, a, I can see how it'd be a problem for me. But I, then I think about it. If it's not a problem for them, then... And they're happy with it. That's their goal. I just want to stay on food. Then is it? Are they I sabotaging? I just call it self-awareness now. Like mm-hmm. You're self-aware of yeah. what you're doing, and I'll see you next month when it's time <laughs> to renew. Yeah. So I heard you say one tip to overcome self-sabotaging is to change. change. It's to get outside of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. I believe another tip is to um, value excellence and the mentality of achieving excellence versus mm. the mentality of always being perfect and sure having mm. to sure be thing. such this perfectionist that you create in your mind that, okay, if everything can't be perfect, then I'm not even going to start the mission. Mm. I'm not even going to start working towards my goals versus having that excellence, achieving excellence mentality of saying, I'm going to do a little bit by a little bit yeah. to start working towards and not procrastinating to- towards these goals so that I can at least step outside of that comfort sure, zone. Sure, because you're putting yourself on a, your own pedestal mm-hmm. that you can't even meet your own marks. So you fail, you want to give grace to everybody else but self. Mm. So yeah. yeah, definitely, you know, Start start with that. Start with the acknowledgement of this is what it is. And then when I, you know, in, in social work, when we tell our clients we see a problem, so, the thing is I want to lose weight. Mm-hmm. What are the steps? That's the goal. That's the goal. I, I want to lose weight. What are the steps that, that you're doing to achieve mm-hmm. that goal? One, two, three. Let's, let's, and you tell me what that looks like. Mm-hmm. Measurable not, goals. Measurable goals. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell you what that looks like. I want you to tell me mm-hmm. what that looks like. Because if you tell me, you're more able to complete that versus me telling right. you. Right. Because now you're a part of the plan. Mm-hmm. You know? So I think that, you know, having that mentality of wanting to do better, but you got to know better to do better. But when you know do you want to do? Do you want to do the work? Sometimes yeah. people don't want to do the work. Right. You can go to counseling. You can receive all the tips from, <laughs> you know, from your counselors. And they tell you and they give you homework. Mm-hmm. You go home with homework and you're supposed to do X, Y, and Z. But what is the purpose of you going and you showing up every single day, but you're not doing the work doing the homework. for, for mm-hmm. self? Mm-hmm. How much do you love yourself? Self-sabotaging. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like another tip to overcoming... Um, self-sabotaging yourself is to give yourself rewards when you see that we're meeting you know certain goals that can help bridge that gap of you procrastinating Mm -hmm. and not meeting your long-term goals Mm -hmm. reward yourself i feel like collectively as um, a culture we have difficulty giving ourselves grace you know um and rewarding ourselves. Because we don't know. get it anywhere else. Mm-hmm. So we don't even really know how that looks. And that's why we have to kind of lean heavily on each other yes. to be that. And if you don't have that that cheering squad in, in your corner, you got to pat yourself on the back mm-hmm. and say, you know. Reward yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of a song 
a song by um, an artist, a hip hop artist named Gunna. He has a song called Today I Did Good, where mm. he's acknowledging that, hey, today I ate healthy. Hey, today I went to therapy. Hey, today I used healthy com- communication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did good. Mm-hmm. Like, acknowledge it. Reward yourself for it. I thought you was going to say Donna Lawrence, encourage yourself. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's another good one. <laughs> you got to push but, yourself but outside Gunna, that comfort that. zone. That, that, is a, that, is, that is a good song. You got to put her on Gunna. <laughs> <laughs> Gunna, wanna. I remember that from back in the but day. That's, I, heard I mean, no that's, that's really time. good though. When you when you acknowledge and you see that the goal that you have and you are writing those things out and you're, I love checking stuff off because mm-hmm. I'm a write. I, I like to write stuff down. I like to check yeah. stuff off. Yeah. That makes that that yeah. right there is accomplishment for me in yeah. itself. When I when I when I, I everybody gets on me because I I write every single. Why don't you just type it? You just, you got your way, mm-hmm. and I got my way. Right. And I love checking it off. I love seeing that I have completed this task, and now mm-hmm. I can move on to the next task. And you highlighted a very important point. Only you know how you can step outside Say of it. that comfort Say zone it. and reach your goals. Yes. Like you said earlier, mm-hmm. your counselor is there to guide you, but mm-hmm. they can't do, they the, can't work do the work for you. you. Only you know, okay, yeah. I'm a visual learner. I need to write this down. Yes. And somebody else may be an auditory learner. Mm-hmm. So they might say, okay, I need to record myself yes. saying these goals, and right. I need to listen to it in the right. car every morning. Exactly. You know you know yourself to mm-hmm. overcome that, that um, self-sabotaging. Sab- yes, mm-hmm. very much so. Oh, she had something? I was going to say, Sarah, you got anything? Uh, uh, not right yeah. now. I just okay. had my piece early. I, I'm, I'm just over here listening yeah. now. Cause, I, I was going to say, I, I like I like how y'all tied goals to it. Because uh, even when we were talking about the young lady that was coming in looking for food stamps, it really was coming in with food stamps. It, I don't know if... I don't know technically if she got a goal to, to really... Mm-hmm. To, to get a better job, right? I, I think that self-sabotage, when you tie it to goals... Um, some of the reasons that they do self-sabotage, two reasons that come to mind for me, a mistrust or a misalignment, sure, right? Sure. A mistrust of myself, yeah. mm-hmm. like I can't do it, and mm-hmm. we've been talking about that, mm-hmm. and a, or right. a misalignment. I got goals here, mm-hmm. but the steps to get there, mm-hmm. like y'all have been yes, saying, right. yeah. I'm not willing to I'm do not that. I'm right. not looked willing to do that. It good on paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, the but work. I didn't realize that it was, it's going to take so much to realize, yeah. mm-hmm. And then we also get in our head about the what ifs. What if, yeah. The what if thoughts, like, well, what, you know, if I do this, what if this is going to happen? That you mm-hmm. are, you're already planning your disaster for, before it even happened. But how do right. you even know that you're going to fail? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unless you try. Okay. Bet on yourself. Always bet on, mm-hmm. you. bet on you. What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that can happen? You fail, and then you pick yourself back up. Mm-hmm. Or you have your community to help pick you back up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get out your own head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Easier my, said than done, people. Yeah, but it's not when, but when saying no, because people say that it's easier said than done. Yeah. But what are, what are you willing to do to make it happen? Mm. Are you willing to put I, the work in, even if it's easier said than done? What are you willing to do for yourself? I say this: when you get tired, oh, you gonna make some changes. Yeah, yeah. But, but you gotta get tired. But you gotta get tired. You gotta get tired. You gotta get tired first. And and I, my hope is that. People eventually do get tired, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that that sounds kind of it's like why do you want people to get tired? Because when they get tired, they're going to make some changes, right? Yeah, right. So you must have mm-hmm. get to that point first to end up wanting to make those changes, or else you're going to stay in the same spot because you're comfortable mm-hmm. with. That. I can attest to that because that's and you better that was, get tired. Yeah, you got to get, get tired because right I was now. tired of my nah. situation, yeah. which is how I end up moving to Atlanta. Mm. I, I quit my defects job because okay. it was it was too much. It was becoming toxic. I was having anxiety. Like, my anxiety was just to the roof. Mm. And my doctor told me, either I put you on anxiety medication or you quit your job. Mm. I quit my job, put my two I know that. <laughs> And I moved. I moved to Atlanta. But I had no job. My cousin mm. said, what's the worst that can happen? You don't, I mean, you don't, you don't want to stay there. Come mm-hmm. here and see what you... So I bet it on myself, and I packed that up my... Risk. Man, I packed up that Sonata, and we mm-hmm. were headed on 85 to Atlanta. You know, it took me some time to get a job, but I eventually did. Mm-hmm. But I never gave up, because that's what I wanted to do, because I bet it on myself. Mm-hmm. Good that job like to you. successful mm-hmm. story. Seriously, yeah. good job to you. Good I, job. I know the old people used to say... I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Sick and, right. Well, what you going to do? What, what you, you going to do what about do? it? <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> exactly. And then when you do... You pat yourself on the job, and it's like, I knew you could do it all along. That was a great success story. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. And look where you're at now, right oh, here with the host of Speaking with Gravity. You know what? We, <laughs> not, we, we, we ain't nobody, though. I mean, I ain't nobody. 
<laughs> but but the uh but, but the show is definitely something. The, the yes. platform I think of speaking with gravity is definitely mm-hmm. something. Oh, and, and, definitely. and we appreciate having you. Uh, I appreciate you. being uh, here with you all. Thank yes, you all so much yes, for having Tell me. the audience your name one more time. It's Kiwana. My name is Kiwana Hills, representing for um AIDS Health Foundation. Love it. ATL in the house. Yay! Newly ATL. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It'll be ten years next in January. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it'll be ten years that's in January. How, how can we find you? How can we find you on the internet or I'm on LinkedIn. Wherever? I'm on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I love TikTok. My fellow okay. TikTok is right here. Right. <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Instagram. Mm-hmm. What's your what's your Instagram, Twitter? My Instagram is Zeta Lady Ten. Now you will have to be approved because my page is private. Okay. And mm-hmm. I realize that you know you have people that Thanks for just, those boundaries. Yes, yeah, <laughs> look for you. So uh and Same Kiwana Hills on, on, on LinkedIn. TikTok too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I definitely enjoyed this episode. Thank I did too. too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. And mm-hmm. thank you for hosting, joining us as a host today. I appreciate being Good. here and I yes. hope to come again. Yeah. I, we hope so too. <laughs> so y'all out there work on yourselves, continue to work on yourselves, uh, mm-hmm. continue to uh, work on your mental health. You know, uh, myself, I think I was self-sabotaging when I had the wrong mindset. Mm-hmm. Yes. I didn't have the right mindset. Yes. So continue right. to be mindful, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, continue to make healthy choices, choices, right. healthy decisions. Uh, so thanks, everyone, for tuning in once again to today's episode of Speaking with Gravity. We hope that you found our discussion on avoiding self-sabotage, mm-hmm. as well as, man, we had a pretty long discussion on, mm-hmm. on, on Taryn's topic, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, can they be, the, yeah. You know, be best friends without... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right. So, so we, hope we, we hope that you all found everything insightful uh, and inspiring and engaging. Remember that you have the power to break free from mm-hmm. self-destructive patterns and create the life that you deserve. Stay tuned for more episodes that are packed with tips and strategies to help you thrive. Until and next time. If you all enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends, colleagues, relatives. Um, you know, just share it. Please do. Please do. Yeah.